So how did Keurig coffee brewers take what was actually a really good problem or challenge, shall we say, and turn it into a marketing success on television? The fun challenge that we're faced with, with every project we take on, is how do we diagnose what the problem is and how do we convey those messages to the public? That's first and foremost. And sometimes it's not what the, the, uh, the company or the business thinks. Usually it comes more from what the consumer's feedback is. So that is job one, solve that first and we're on our way. Keurig became a household name because they became known as the most convenient coffee brewer on the market. Keurig and convenience were synonymous, right? Right. And that's great. I mean, every company with a product, you want your brand to be known as something. Like, I love this part of the business because when you think of Mercedes-Benz, you think of a luxury vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. When you think of Volvo cars, you think of safety. And when people think of Keurig, they automatically think of convenience. And again, it was awesome because that really put them on the map and made them the, the very successful company that they are. but they wanted to right. move beyond convenience. And what does that mean? They wanted people to know, hey, not only are we convenient, we have some of the best tasting coffee in the world from all over the world. If you like Starbucks, we have Starbucks. You if like you like Dunkin' Pete's, Donuts, you like Dunkin' Donuts, whatever it is, yep. we have it. And it's brewed to perfection with our great convenient brewer. But the challenge we had when we were creating this campaign was, although they wanted to get past convenience and into great tasting coffee, there was a feeling from, a, from some people that maybe the coffee isn't as good as you could get somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They were thinking like, if I went to a coffee house, it wouldn't be as good as that. Right. In essence, it was a myth, but it was a problem we had to solve. And that's one of the real important things when it comes to a direct-to-consumer um, direct response campaign or infomercial in this case, that you have to take on the problem, you have to expose it because people know it, and you have to really take the time to unpack it and convince somebody with really compelling things. So that was the challenge. So what were, what were the things that we did um, that address this problem or this challenge with Keurig? Well, there were a variety of things that we did. One is we simply <clears> showed <throat> people, look, we've got coffee from Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Pete's, you name it, we have it. And it's from the best known coffee in the world. But we what do. we were doing there is we were leveraging credibility. Sure, We were yes, leveraging credibility right. of these brands to say, okay, they have these brands, this wonderful tasting coffee that people love. So that's kind of like, okay, we're chipping at it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that people would think is, gosh, how can I get a great tasting cup of coffee so quickly out of this brewer? So one of the things that we had to show people was that just like you make coffee in your brew at home with a filter, the Keurig coffee brewer actually has a built-in filter in the coffee cup. And why we why we took that on is because it's knowledge, it's common knowledge from people that when you're brewing coffee, coffee goes through a filter. So if it goes through a filter, it must be good. Mm -hmm. And people didn't understand that each pod that Keurig offers in their in their in their coffee mm -hmm. has a filter. So we had to uncover that. So we did some animation to show how the coffee went through the, the mm -hmm. uh, pod and went through the filter, and then it filtered this great tasting coffee. But on top of that, we had to talk about how it used water and the perfect heat, mm -hmm. heated water, and the pressure all going through this coffee filter to give a great cup of coffee. So when you start to understand that, that all that's going on in that little pod and this machine is allowing that to happen, it becomes really, really right. uh, understandable that you could have great taste in coffee. People didn't realize that what takes place with a regular coffee brewer, 
was actually taking place in sort of miniature form inside the Keurig coffee maker. Right. So when we did that and we talked about the great tasting coffee, talked about the filter, talked about how the machine all worked, we overcame the myth or the problem that Keurig didn't make great tasting coffee. And once we started doing that and started explaining this, people were understanding, oh, this really is something more than I, I ever thought it was. Well, we gave people reason to believe that, right. oh my gosh, okay, here, first they've got all these great tasting coffee options, and now I can see that they actually can brew a great cup of coffee. So we gave them the reason to believe it. Right, so that is like, that's job one when it comes to putting together a great direct-to-consumer campaign um, in an infomercial or short-form commercial or what or digital or whatever the messaging you're going to do is talk about the problem and find very um, effective and unique ways to solve it that's very understandable, that's in bite-sized pieces that people mm -hmm. can get, and then you want to prove that out. And we'll talk about proving it out in, an, in another episode. If this information was helpful to you or anybody you know, please like it, subscribe, and pass it on and share it.